So this is the aquaponics setup that we have in our school. Uh, this is something that we've built uh, over the summer to have ready for students this year. And we wanted to show you it before we actually started to put in some of the grow media and the fish. Uh, so you can see how it kind of, how it has gone together. We tried to over-engineer over it a bit. Uh, with the grow beds, we went with reservoirs uh, that are typically used in hydroponic operations. Uh, we went with these uh, so that we didn't have to worry about maybe any repairs down the road. Uh, I know you can go with a, with a pond liner grow bed, uh, but we went, uh, we went with these reservoirs. And then our sump is the same thing as well. Uh, one thing that we did go a little bit cheaper on is with the fish tank. Uh, so we just went with a tote. Uh, it's a recycled tote, uh, and we had that donated. And, and we went with that cheaper because to get like really good kind of fish tanks around here, really big kind of plastic containers, uh, the price tag gets pretty pricey. So that would have eaten up a lot of our budget. Uh, all the supplies uh, that we've included, uh, we're going to include in the description so you can kind of see kind of where we were price wise. Uh, our budget for this project was 4000 uh, and we came in under that with a lot of kind of expenditures on places where we, we feel like it actually counts. So we, we have a stealth RO system here. This is what we're going to use to, to top up the fish tank. It's going to feed into kind of this wastewater. In our back prep room is where we're actually getting our water supplies from. So we have a hose uh, and this hose is going to feed into that room. When we need to top up, we'll just kind of tie into the, the line that we have there and then top it up that way. Uh, in the fish tank, uh, we have an SLO. Uh, which pulls the solids off the bottom. We're going with this design to start, uh, but this it hasn't been cemented in, so we have some opportunity to kind of pull it off and play around with kind of different types of SLOs uh, and see kind of what works better. The one thing we're going to add is aeration. Uh, we just haven't thrown the air stones in yet, but that'll be in there as well. Uh, so the water will come out of here. It gravity feeds down. Uh, so out of the SLO, it'll feed into the grow beds. We've tried to give ourselves lots of valves to control the flow rate as much as possible. Uh, so we have two grow beds here. Uh, these will be filled with hydrogen. Uh, and then we have our bell siphons here uh, that we just built out of PVC. Uh, probably one of our larger expenditures has been just like on bulkhead fittings. Uh, these definitely aren't cheap. So here uh, we have another one there on our tote. Uh, but then it, it ties into the piping and then from here, uh, the grow bed will flood and then drain and will drain into our sump down here. Uh, so they drain into here and then we have a pump that's recirculating. Right now we have half inch uh, with an opportunity to kind of manipulate the flow rate on the valve going into the tank. And this is something that we can uh, play around with. Uh, if we need a bigger pipe size, we might need to change it out uh, as time goes on. These are our LED grow lights. So we went with Growtronics. Uh, these are LED. Uh, they're multiple spectrum grow lights, so 6400K and 2700K. Uh, so good for both kind of fruiting plants and leafy greens. Uh, we spent a little bit more on these because uh, we felt like they were pretty essential to kind of the operation being indoors here. We have them hung up actually just on this temporary structure. This is what we use for our, our grad curtains. So we kind of found this sitting around in the back and it works great for hanging grow lights right now. One thing that we had kind of before uh, is this Atlas Scientific Robotics Wi-Fi hydroponics kit. It doesn't have any sensors set up right now, but it gives us a pH, EC, and temperature in real time. Uh, it goes to ThingSpeak and you can see it kind of live on your device. Uh, so this is kind of nice. It's definitely a bell and some bells and whistles that we have kind of with this system. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind too when you're doing this type of system is depending on where you are, uh, you might some of the regulations might be different. Uh, to raise tilapia in Alberta, we need uh, a fish culture license. Uh, so we got a research fish culture license from the government, uh, and we have that kind of just beside it. Uh, some other fish like goldfish, uh, a lot of systems kind of operate on goldfish, but we wanted to do something uh, from more of an aquaculture's perspective. And so we're going to put tilapia in here once that system kind of gets up and running. I, I guess one other thing is uh, this structure has been built by our construction class. We, we did it when lumber prices were pretty high. Uh, this can definitely be done cheaper than kind of how we did it. Uh, but it's uh, just a spruce structure underneath and then they clad it in cedar. Uh, but that's basically our aquaponic system in a nutshell. Uh, if it's something that you're interested in, hit subscribe uh, and follow along with us kind of as we work on cycling the system, putting fish into the system, introducing plants. Uh, we're going to try to document it kind of every step of the way. So uh, thanks for checking in, uh, and we look forward to kind of learning with you on Awkward Aquaponics.